So I've had this Fuji Q4 paint sprayer and T70 spray gun for a few years now, and I absolutely love it. So I think that it's time that I share exactly how to use it with you. So let's dive in. First things first, adding paint into the sprayer's container. Instead of just pouring the paint straight in, I like to pour the paint into a filter first, so I don't get any dried up paint or clumps of anything in the sprayer. Seriously, the smallest little thing can clog the paint sprayer. So even if I'm using a new container of paint, I always, always, always pour the paint into a filter first. There are reusable paint filters or there are even disposable paint filters. Either way, just set it on the container, pour your paint into it and let it filter out of the filter and into the container. Then I like to thin out my paint. Yep, my Fuji Q4 turbine is completely capable of spraying thick paints even thick chalk paint. But because it can doesn't mean that it's the best way. I've sprayed straight up thick chalk paint from the sprayer before, but the finish was bumpy and not a super fine finish that I like. So I like to thin out my paint just a little bit. With this sprayer though, I'm not usually particular about how much I thin out the paint. My cheap paint sprayer needs to have the paint almost an exact thickness or else the paint has more of a texture. But this sprayer has way, way, way more forgiveness in it. I've never had to measure out an exact amount of water to paint ratio with this sprayer and I've always had really good results. Obviously, if you're using water-based products, you thin it out with water or a water-based thinning agent. And if you're using other products, you'll need to use a thinning agent that is compatible with that product. But for now, I'll just talk about water-based products because that's what I personally stick to. As a rule of thumb, it's best not to thin out paint more than about 10 to 20 percent. So for a quart of paint, don't add more than about three-fourths of a cup of thinning agent. After I add the water, I mix it up really, really good with a paint stick. And then I latch the top of the spray gun onto the container. When it's time to attach the sprayer to the hose, simply pull down on the quick connect end of the hose, stick the end of the sprayer into the hose, and let the end of the hose pop back up around the sprayer. And then before I spray on my projects, I personally like to test the spray on some cardboard or some paper or something. This lets me get the settings just right before I spray onto my piece. First, I typically adjust the material flow knob on the back of the sprayer. When it is turned all the way clockwise, only air will come out of the sprayer. As you turn the dial counterclockwise, it makes it so then the needle can be pulled back more when you pull the trigger making it so then more paint can come out of the sprayer as you pull the trigger back. So first I get it set to how much paint I want to come out of it. Then I adjust the width of the spray with the dial on the side of the sprayer. When the arrow on the dial is pointed towards the front of the sprayer, the spray will come out at more of a point. When the arrow on the dial is pointed up, the sprayer will come out in a full fan effect. I personally like to have it set somewhere in the middle. Then I make sure that the direction of the spray is right. You can turn the air cap on the front to make it spray vertical or turn it so then it will spray horizontal. As you turn it around, the spray will spray perpendicular to how the bumps are lined up. So if you need it to spray in a fan at an angle, you just turn the air cap to be perpendicular to that angle you need. Then it's time to spray. I personally try to keep my wrist locked while I move the sprayer back and forth. I like to go from one edge to the next as I move across or up and down the piece. As I spray back and forth, I overlap the spray by about 50% to get good coverage. This sprayer makes it really, really easy to adjust from spraying side to side to spraying up and down with just a quick twist of the air cap. I know a lot of other paint sprayers can adjust, but this one is super easy to move. 
I've also found that it's best to be in a well-ventilated area so the spray that gets in the air doesn't settle on top of my freshly painted furniture. When it does, it just makes the paint feel really rough. If I'm outdoors where the spray can move around and spread out, then I don't usually have that problem. But if I'm in a smaller area with very little air circulation, then the spray dries in the air and settles on my somewhat wet paint, making it feel rough. So then I have to sand it down to make it feel smooth again. I'm sure that a large fan would help move the overspray out, but I just personally haven't figured out how to set that up yet in my basement spray booth. After the painting is done, it's time for the part that a lot of people worry about. The cleaning part. And I promise it's really not that bad. Seriously. First, I just unhook the sprayer from the hose and empty out any leftover paint from the container. I release any paint that is left inside of the sprayer and the suction tube by pulling the trigger back for a few seconds. And then I rinse off the suction tube, plastic seal thing, and the container. It usually takes about 5-10 to 10 minutes to clean it out after regular use. Every once in a while I have to do a deeper clean, but honestly for the most part, it just takes me about 5 minutes to clean it out. If I'm using chalk paint or something that cleans up really, really easily, then I can get away with letting it sit in the sprayer for the day while I paint all of the coats of paint. But if it's something that is harder to clean up, then I clean it the second that I am done spraying one coat. After the bottom part and the container are all rinsed off, I fill the container with warm soapy water if I had water-based product in the sprayer. Obviously, if I have a different type of product in the sprayer, I would use the appropriate cleaning agent. And then I spray that warm soapy water through the sprayer and into a bucket. Spraying the warm soapy water gets all of the paint out of the inside of the sprayer so you don't get any buildup inside of there. Then I dump out the rest of the warm soapy water. And fill it up with clean water to spray through the sprayer and rinse out the inside of it. And then I dump out any excess water and make sure that the container and the bottom of the sprayer is all cleaned off. Especially inside of that plastic part. I also like to take the pressure tube apart in the middle and run water through it to make sure that nothing is built up in there. Then it's time to take the paint sprayer apart to clean the smaller pieces. I usually unscrew the first two pieces in the front and give them a quick rinse. With this sprayer, I have found that it's the easiest to unscrew the needle before unscrewing the tip. Then I use the included wrench to loosen the tip and then everything else comes off easily. I like to use a small brush to rinse where the tip screws in and then I make sure I can see all the way through that area where the needle goes in. Then I use the teeny teeny tiny brush to clean inside the tip and I rinse off all the other pieces. While I'm cleaning everything, I make sure to not put the sprayer under the running water. If I want to clean it off, I rub it off with a wet rag. Then I let it all dry before I put it back together. If it's wet when you put it back together and you spray, you might end up with some drips of water in your finish. 
and that's not fun. When it's all dry, I put it back together. The biggest thing to keep in mind when putting it back together is to screw the tip on tightly before putting the needle in and screwing on the fluid adjusting knob. I've put the needle in first and I ended up with a mess with the needle stuck in the tip. That was not fun to get out. All right, now let's talk accessories. I personally like to use the 1.3 millimeter tip and needle. I have the 1.5 and the 1.8, but when I try to use them, I didn't love them. Technically, I think the 1.3 is best for polyurethane and you're supposed to use the 1.8 for paint, but I feel like the 1.8 left too much texture for my liking. I have the flexible whip hose connected to the regular Fuji hose. The flex hose is extra flexible and lighter than the regular hose that comes with the sprayer, so it makes it easier to spray and to get into small areas. Plus, it adds some extra length to the sprayer since you're supposed to keep the turbine somewhere like around 20 feet away from where you're spraying. One of the best things that I bought for my setup is this remote starter. Now I can turn the turbine on and off without ever walking over to the turbine. All you do is plug the turbine into the remote special plug and then plug that into the power. Then the remote talks to the plug and turns your turbine on and off for you. I love this thing. If the one quart cup is too big for a project, then I switch it out for these mini cups that hold about a cup of paint. I just use a wrench to loosen the coupler in front of the trigger. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. The first time it might be super, super, super tight. Mine was. But once you get it off, you can attach the spray gun to the top of the mini cup lid. I honestly love and use these cups all the time for small projects and tight spaces. All right, so after all of that, what are my honest thoughts on this paint sprayer? Well, first and foremost, the super fine finish that the sprayer creates is out of this world amazing. I don't have problems with fisheye, texture, splatters, none of that nonsense that you commonly get with the cheap or beginner paint sprayers. It straight up creates an amazing, basically perfect finish with basically any paint. I've heard so many complaints about how paint sprayers always have issues. I've had this sprayer for almost three years now and I have only had a handful of problems when using it multiple times a month. The problems I've had have always been resolved by taking the sprayer apart a little bit more and cleaning everything out just a little bit better. I think about every six to eight months, I've had to spend just a little bit more time deep cleaning it. One time I couldn't figure it out, so I contacted Fuji directly and they were quick to help me troubleshoot where the dried up paint was blocking the airflow. Okay, so is the Q-Series worth it? I bought the Q-Series, which is more expensive than the Mini Mite Series. I bought it because the Q-Series is quieter. And honestly, I'm not sure if it was completely worth it. It's still loud, but it's definitely not as loud as my shop vac and other tools. I think that buying the Mini Mite Series would be a great way to save some money, but still have an absolutely awesome sprayer. And that's basically it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if this was helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps us out. If you want more, check out these videos.